Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, now more than ever, all our favorite movies are just go-go going to your favorite streaming services. And if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you're in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I am the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of industry professionals, and we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and a conversational fashion. And if you like how we do things around here, I'm going to go on a limb and assume that you do because you're listening right now. Uh, you can subscribe to the podcast. You can find us over at, well, basically where we get your podcasts. We're at Am- Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google, pretty much all providers. And we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In the C2 YouTube channel. So if you can subscribe, give us that five-star rating and a like everywhere across the board, we would really appreciate it. Also, don't hesitate to check us out on social media. We're on Facebook, we're on uh, Twitter, and we're on Instagram at, guess, you know, you guessed it, we're in the seats, uh, for all sorts of fun updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In the Seats, in the seats.ca for all the latest and greatest from the world of film, television, basically the moving image at large. Because if we love to write about it, and talk about it. We love it when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So please pay us a visit. On this episode, we got a fun one because guess what? Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is now available on your favorite video on demand platform and also on potentially your new favorite streaming service over at Paramount Plus, which is a a scant $5.99 per month Canadian for those of you listening north of the border. Uh, they're adding a lot of stuff, and it's a it's a pretty good service. And like I said, they've added Sonic the Hedgehog 2 uh, as we speak. It's there right now. You can watch it. Uh, but in advance of that, we had the unique pleasure of sitting down with Canada's own Agent Stone, Mr. Lee Majub, to talk about... Uh, running it back and uh, sort of being a part of this universe once more and how uh i guess maybe the second time around it seems a bit sweeter too because uh, it definitely felt like uh he got to appreciate these moments especially given how much screen time he got to have with jim carrey and how much his character got to evolve and just sort of being able to be a part of uh this really established and really dynamic universe which uh I personally, you know, hope they make more Sonic movies because they're doing a really good job with them. And I mean, they're definitely fun for the whole family as well. But uh, like I said, if you haven't already checked out Sonic the Hedgehog 2 in theaters, you can check it on video on demand. Or you can uh, sign up for Paramount Plus, the streaming service, and you can check it out there. But first off, enjoy our talk with Lee because between you and me, it's a good one. Well, I mean, obviously, Lee, just first off, obviously, thank you so much for the time today, man. I really appreciate this. No worries. Thank you. Now, I mean, I guess my first question is like, walk me through that phone call of, okay, the movie's a hit. We're running it back. We want you back. Like, walk <laughs> me through that sort of experience, you know? Um, yeah, I, I just, I remember um, my agent and manager calling me, and uh, and letting me know I was, I was, I was coming back, like confirmed coming back, and. Uh, yeah, I got pretty misty eyed to be honest. It was, it was really cool just knowing that, yeah, because I was I'm I'm such a fan of the movies myself. You know, the first film and the whole process of making it, as you know, was was such a big highlight for me. And um, so to be able to come back and and join that team again and and, and work with Jim and um, and Jeff and Toby and Nan, all of them, Paramount. It's just uh, I got really excited. Plus, not having to read for it, I'm sure, is always a plus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's. I didn't even think about that. That's that's really. Cool. You know what? From here on out, never auditioning again. <laughs> oh man, man, it feels like your character got a little bit more swagger in this one, a little more room to play and move around. Like, how were, how did you find sort of the evolution of Agent Stone on this one? I, I loved it. I, I really loved that we got to see him, like who he is away from uh, Dr. Robotnik a little bit. Yeah. Um, I loved uh, being able to figure out, okay, how would he respond with Wade 
how would he respond in those situations? And, and it, it was really fun because I talked to Jeff about it a little bit, like, you know, when we were figuring out the, the blocking and the scene and everything. And I was like, look, I really, I, you know, there's, there's something about Stone. Like he's, he, he's an agent, right? He's got to be qualified. Right. And, you know, and being able to take care of himself, being able to like, you know, defend himself, defend others, um, stand his ground. So can, you know, do you mind if we bring a little bit of that? So uh, I remember there was this moment where, uh, you know, I'm sitting on the chair, my hands, my, my hands are cuffed and like the decision to keep my legs crossed and stay casual was an, a very conscious decision on our parts and very specific because it kind of showed that all right, we're here and this is more like a nuisance than it is. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Actually feeling like I'm in danger. So uh, yeah, really cool to kind of uh, delve in a little bit deeper. I want to see where that goes. I would love to see like, you know, a nice action sequence where he takes out like 10 people. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> well, I mean, that kind of spins into my next question because I mean, obviously uh, you work very close with Jim, not on the, I mean, on both films, obviously, but mm. I mean, Jim has said very publicly that, you know, I might be stepping away for a while, taking some mm. time. How has it been for you to sort of, uh, get these moments with not just an actor of his caliber, but just another Canadian, just to sort of have these moments to sort of, where you could sort of sit and ask questions and sort of learn from basically a master of the business. Uh, uh there's no words really. Um, just, uh, you know, incredible, super grateful for having, you know, not just worked with him on one, but two movies um, for, you know, our characters and our relationship to, to grow. What was really nice about working on this one was that he and I had already, you know, it wasn't kind of like being a, a, a new kid in school, like it was in the first film where, you know, all of us are coming in, we're trying to get a feel for each other. So, you know, coming into Sonic 2, it was like all of us knew each other. Jim and I had our rapport from the first film. We knew what the characters uh, were about and just kind of got to um, play and, and feed off of each other even more and just kind of like uh, stay in each other's energies, which, which was really cool. Like, you know, um, I think he and I really kind of do well in, e in each other's space, if that makes sense, and, and just both feel um, very supported. Um, you know, and I'll only speak from my experience, like he's just so, so gracious and, and so generous. And, you know, it's, uh, it's incredible to look at and be like, oh, wow, like I got to work with him on, on two pictures. And like, I never thought that was going to be a possibility, you know, growing up and watching his stuff. And, you know, being so affected by him in such a positive way, um, you know, from Ace and The Mask and Eternal Sunshine and, mm -hmm. you know, Man on the Moon and like just all these incredible movies. Um, and now to, I don't know, be part of it is is quite surreal. Yeah, I don't take, what I realize is I don't really, I'm not very good at sitting in the moments afterwards and really taking it in. Right. You know, so... You know, I appreciate being asked these questions because it, it allows me to really sit in it and kind of emotionally take it in and breathe it in. And um, I appreciate that. Well, and I mean, and I mean, that's something else, too, because I mean, obviously you got the part in the first one and you shot it before everything happened with the pandemic. Mm. But then everything blew up and then you shot the second one. It's like it's like you had your breakout role, but sort of in this kind of muted bubble at the same time. And like, how has mm. the experience been for you personally? Like, can you still go to Starbucks or like do every once in a while, do you see a kid walking on the street going, Hey, it's ancient stone. No, actually I, I haven't experienced like what was, like you said, what was really interesting was right when Sonic one came out, I think we had maybe three weeks in the theaters before everything right shut down if i'm not mistaken that's about that sounds about right yeah yeah and so you know one of the things that happened with everybody is life slowed down and and real life starts to happen and and it's like okay you know there were all these hopes of like momentum and and next level and where are we going to go from here career wise and you know the world gets hit by a pandemic and it kind of puts things into perspective and um you know, I think one of the things I really learned during during the lockdown and 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 everything was uh, taking time to like breathe and meditate and 
be really grateful for for the very um you know what seem like simple things in life yeah, you know for sure. roof over our heads food in the fridge um being able to support my loved ones or you know like my cats something as simple as like realizing how you know grateful i was to like be able to get them cat food and take care of them and right. you know, pay your vet bills during that time and um so i think and then getting the call for the second one while we were still kind of in those protocols and everything and um you know there was anxiety for sure coming in and but they were incredible like i mean we were getting tested three times a week there was a lot of protocols on set so it felt quite free like it didn't feel very different besides you know now we're wearing masks and we're getting tested and temperatures and everything but we still had the freedom to work and experiment and, and play and and now the second one comes out at the end ish of yeah. you know you know once movie theaters are really opening up and and everything so it was really interesting that it bookended in a sense of like the first movie came out just before theaters closed the second movies come out just as like theaters are really opening up it, it's kind of wild to think about it like that but it's so true and i mean I got to imagine just creatively from you as well, because I mean, the way this, these films have been built, like there's legacy, there's lore, they're going into the story mm -hmm. of like pulled from the video games. And there's like, you're basically legacy now in, in a very sort of well-established universe. <laughs> How does that yeah. feel just from a creative standpoint to, to know that, Hey, maybe somewhere down the line, they might call you back again. I mean, who knows? That would be, that would be so cool. I, you know, one of the one of the coolest things is seeing um, fan theories or seeing uh, fans fans. What's really cool is fans are starting to compare Stone to other um, support characters to Robotnik and Eggman from the video games, from the cartoons. And, you know, they're like there are, are discussions like major in-depth discussions <laughs> as to like why stone is better than scratch and grounder or wait scratch and grounder oh no they're maybe equal no nobody's been as faithful to robotnik as stone has like and uh you know and there's fans out there like you know asking sega to like you know put stone in the games like we need agent stone like we've never wanted a character to come into the game so badly so it's really cool to see that stuff and uh, see how much fans have uh, connected to that character well and i mean it's wild man if you get to be a playable character one day i think that's definitely oh, going to be a bucket list moment for for, for anybody <laughs> <laughs> uh, this whole thing is bucket list everything everything that's happened is is bucket list with these with these movies man but you know what man just congrats and keep doing the good work and you know thanks again Thank for the you, time David. tonight man thanks thanks i appreciate it all right cheers lee and don't forget to to visit our friends over at bay street video for all your dvd blu-ray rental or purchasing needs this summer as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well over at 1172 bay street toronto ontario canada you can give them a call at 416-964-9088 that's 416-964-9088 or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your dvd and blu-ray needs